She's kind of oh. active, so okay. the best way is kind of just, yeah, okay. you just have to let like her go you. through you. Okay. And then just want to control her. All right, got me on that. I'm nervous on that. Bring her back this way. Okay. There you go. All right. Okay, where did her head go? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop. Well, it all started when my wife and I had a conversation one day. We were like, man, it's been a real nice blessing to be able to attend these various health and homesteading conferences the past couple of years. These conferences have given us the opportunity to increase our knowledge in a number of areas, as well as the opportunity to meet really neat people. And all these different events have been like an investment in ourselves, helping us to learn to be better so that way we can be better. And some of the best of the best moments during all these events have been the ones that have provided hands-on opportunities, like being side by side with people like Joel Southen, who have excelled in what they have been doing for years and learning right there beside of them. Good. Well done. Well done. Thank you. That's a nice. That's a nice. Okay. okay. Just leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Do you take your heart? That's the gizzard. The gizzard. Okay. The heart was with the liver. With the liver. Okay. Now put that in your left hand. Yeah. I found out. Accumulate it. Accumulate it. Okay. But gently. You don't want to break the intestine. Right. Gently, gently pull. You're gonna, yeah, right. okay. So yeah. Here's the pot. yeah. You're trying to get to one, one, part one poo cord. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Right there. And as we were talking, we were like, it's been so neat to be able to attend these different conferences across the country, but it would be really, really nice if there was actually some events in our area. We live just outside of Charlotte and we're like, why aren't there any events in our area? Then it just so happens that a couple reaches out to us. Their names are Bob and Amber. And we do a video chat with them and they're like, we want to have a conference in this area. And I'm like, um, we were just talking about that. This is like, whoa. So after talking with them, I was like, let's do this. Let's go forward with this conference. They had already had a number of things worked out, but I'm like, I want to be a part. It's right in my neighborhood. I want to help. And then after our video chat, we met in person at the campground where we were going to have the conference. Check out this beautiful campground that we're having this expo at. All through here is where we're planning to have tents and vendors and all that, all different speakers and, and demonstrations and hands-on things to be a part of. And right down here is the main speaking area. And guys, check this out. Look how much space is down here. Tell them guys, look at how much space is down here and show them the acoustics. How does it sound down here? You lay -hoo. And while we were there, I'm looking around and I'm like, whoa, this place is great. It's huge. It has a lot of potential to grow this thing to be really big one day. So we were super excited about moving forward with the Mountain Readiness Expo 2023. And the goal with this conference was to be just slightly different than some of the others. It was a, a combination of a number of things, of bushcrafting, of prepping, of homesteading, and health. All of it kind of combined together. But the only challenge was this conference needed to be put together in like three months. Could it be done? Yes, it was. But to be completely honest, I was a little surprised at some of the speakers that Bob and Amber were able to line up. Speakers like Alan Kay from the History Channel's Alone series. And we were able to get sponsors like Redmond who were willing to join on and be a part of this event. And as we were gearing up for this event, Redmond sent giveaways to give out to each attendee of the expo. We also added flyers that went along with my presentation for the expo and other freebies and discount codes. And it's hard to believe that we had our video chat with Bob and Amber and then fast forward just a couple weeks and then BAM! We're right here the day of the expo and people are coming in. And it was really neat to see the wide variety of classes and workshops that went on here at the expo. Yeah, 
good. More 45. Good. Excellent. Good. Excellent. Shooting off. Good. Nice. Nice job. Good. 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 Keep that left hand active. We want to keep it active. And my family and I had the opportunity to do a Q&A panel talk session together where we interacted with the attendees. They would ask us questions and we would give them answers. It's just amazing to think about and it gives you a different appreciation for food and, and I've heard the comments before of people like questioning, why would you process, why would you butcher an animal when you could just go to the store and buy one? Hello, that just shows the disconnect that most of our society have. It's like, wow, wow. It gets even better is whenever you get a comment like, why do you kill chickens when you just go to the grocery store and buy them and nothing has to die? It just shows the disconnect that we've created in our society when all of our ancestors, they had that connection. They, they understood the importance of these things. And, and even, I, I'm not trying to beat up on anybody who is vegan, but to be vegan, it's a luxury. It's, it's, a, it's a luxury to be able to do that because most people throughout history could not live that lifestyle. And uh, it's something uh, that Weston A. Price, something he discovered. And in addition to that, I gave a solo presentation. Now, I do talk about a lot of the how-to things sometimes, but I enjoy talking about some of the deeper matters even more of family, of faith, the reasons why I do what I do and the things that are gonna get you through the hard times and challenges that we tend to face in life. When you look at the, the scope of human history, apart from God, we can't do anything. We need Him. So I encourage you guys to, to look at that because for our world to really reach what it's supposed to reach and what God intended to, we need the right kind of government to do so. We don't have it in this world. We don't. Like I said, leaders are leading by their own way and it only leads to destruction. And we need to make sure that we're not leading by our own way. But the good news is there's a lot of verses, a lot of things in the Bible that talk about that time that is beyond the bad news that we're pre prepping for. It's beyond that. It is a time of good, but it is a time that will also, people on a whole be learning the skills that we are teaching and now because it's an integral part of who we are and what we've been created to be. Everyone shall sit under his vine and under his fig tree and no one shall make them afraid for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Everyone. We won't have to worry about people not having the properties that they want. It's saying here, it's giving us a promise that everyone will have the opportunity to grow food for themselves. No more of that, that fight of trying to find the property. Or if you get into a bad situation, your financial situation, your family's in, and you can't pay the taxes or whatever, there's no threat of being kicked off your land. Because it says, no one will make them afraid. That's the way that our laws should be set up. That no one would ever have that taken away from them, ever. And another speaker that was there was my good friend, Holistic Hilda, from the Wise Traditions podcast. And I always enjoy hearing her and the mindset and uplifting attitude that she has. She's just that kind of person. The first secret is the sun. Is it any surprise that we've been told to avoid the sun, to cover up, to put on sunscreen, and that's the opposite of what we should do? In other words, not everybody that we think is super smart and smarter than us has the right answers. So I'm saying our ancestors spent copious amounts of time in the sun, and they didn't burn, and they got the advantage of the energy the sun gives you. Get this. The sun, a friend of mine told me when I interviewed him, is like the great multivitamin in the sky. It literally is nourishing us with its many rays. But you might say to me, oh, but Hilda, I have fair skin. I burn easily. I look like a tomato from out there too long. I have a tip for you. If you get the morning sun, like many homesteaders and farmers do, it is protective from the rays of the sun that are harsher, the UVA and UVB light, in the middle of the day. So what I'm saying is this. Just like they used to say, build a base tan. You can build a solar callus. You can be out in the sun longer without burning if you get the early morning sun. This is a little secret. So my friend Thaddeus, the guy in the picture before, said get out between 30 to 45 minutes of sunrise and let the sun hit your eyeballs. Be out there for like 15 minutes and just that will help you sleep deeper. It can help you lose weight. Like all these amazing good things, I have no idea. And if you would like to see my presentation, as well as Holistic Hilda's and some others, make sure you check out the links in the show notes below. But out of all the workshops there, I think one of the most popular ones that was there, well, especially with the kids, was a presentation that was given by Carolina Scale. And they gave class participants up-close experiences with snakes. They had all kinds of snakes there black ones, orange ones, 
white ones. Some looked intimidating. All right, this one looks cool, but it just looks intimidating. Who's <laughs> gonna do the other one? You want back for real? They also had a snake that we encounter from time to time on my homestead. Copperhead. Wow. That's crazy how camouflage he is in there. Hope I see him. See it? I can see his mouth. He's right in the leaves there. And it's pretty crazy that we knew that it was right there in those leaves, but we still really couldn't see it unless you like look really, really close. It just shows how easily you could step right on one of those things and not even see it until it bites you. But another snake that we have in our area that's pretty harmless is the black snake. This is Bo. Bo? Yeah, what kind Bo of snake is it? Uh, black rat snake. He came to us. You guys can see his scar right there on his belly where he swallowed a farmer's false egg, a wooden egg. Oh, wow. And uh, they called and asked us to come get him. We took him to the vet and our buddy done the surgery, removed the egg and just how calm and gentle this one was. My wife and then my wife named him Bo. And you know, if you name it, you yep. got it. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we ended up keeping him and he's done excellent. He's been an excellent ambassador for us for all these educational shows. I like rat snakes. They're just, I love how inquisitive they are. They check everything out. They want to know, they're curious. They just, they have a personality. They don't feel intimidating either. Mm -hmm. They're just, and they've got that, that derpy face, that just happy face. Yeah. They just, their super ocular scale <laughs> isn't predominant. It's just laid back and they just look happy. And after the class, if everybody wanted to handle a snake, hold a snake, we've got permits we can sign. And once he offered the hands-on experience of handling the snake, I was like, people gonna be like, no way, no way we're not handling the snake. No, nope. I know how people are with snakes. They just don't handle them. But out of nowhere, Micah's like, yeah, I want to handle them. Do you want to hold that one? You want to hold it? You stay one hand out and I'll hold the rest of them. There you go. There you go. He's Bo. He's just a sweetheart. Feel his muscles in his belly down there? Oh, wow. You got a little friend there. <laughs> it's your first time doing it. You're a brave guy. Where are you going? He's right there. You see his tongue going 100 miles a minute. He's checking you out. <laughs> hey, don't go up there. <laughs> now what all does their tongue do? Uh, what it does, it, as it comes in and out, they have what's called a Jacobson's organ, organ in okay. the roof of their mouth. And that's kind of similar to our sense of smell. What we smell, it tells our brain, hey, we smell birthday cake. And okay. You can picture it. That's what the Jacobson's organ is for them. They smell it. They smell, they smell people. And then if they get that sense of rodents, you'll notice a change in their uh, attention and their direction. Their tongue flicks will become a lot shorter and faster. Wow. But if you, once you learn the body language of them, like as his tongue just comes out, stays out, and comes all the way, he just, that's him just checking things out. Okay. Just hanging out. But if they ever get just like real short and fast, just in out, straight in out, that's them. They have a whiff of something that's either got them scared or hungry. Okay. Black snakes will like mimic a rattle on their mm -hmm. tail. Yep. So is that scared too? Is that one of those things? That's actually, a lot of snakes will do that. A okay. Lot of the corn snakes, rat snakes, even the copperheads will do that. Okay. And what it does is while we've got the copperhead and all this leaf litter here, mm -hmm. it helps show the camouflage that they have, but also if she ever rattles, which is common she is, she never does with us. Wow. But when they rattle in leaf litter like that, it resembles the sound of a rattlesnake rattle. It's because once they're in a leaf litter, that kind of helps give them and, and pronounce their sound to the predator. Uh -huh. So after Michael handled the snake, I was like, mm, it's not going to look good if I just let him handle him and I don't do anything at all. <sighs> I'm not terrified of snakes, but they're not like my favorite thing in the world. So I was like, all right, Mike, you can do it. Let's give it a shot. Let's handle the snake. Come on. Come on, man. You could do it. Can I? I don't know. 
Hypo kind do. Pretty kind nervous. Never held a snake that big, big, I don't think. I'm a scared. Can I do it? You think I can do it? Yeah. You gonna keep me? You gonna encourage me? Ew. No. <laughs> You're not gonna encourage me. <laughs> Somebody's gonna encourage me. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. <laughs> this one is a red tail boa. Red tail boa. Yeah. Where are they native to? All right. Oh. Yep, they're South American species. They are semi-arboreal. Okay. What's the best way to try to hold them? Uh, this oh, one. You said her? Yeah. Yes. Oh, her. Yep, she, she's kind of oh. active, so okay. the best way is kind of just, yeah, okay. you just have to let like her go you. through you. Okay. And then just one oh, hand up. She's heavier than I thought she'd be. Yeah, she's more like. Wow. Nine, she is active. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Strong. So you just like kind of use your. <coughs> and once they get this and... size, if you want, we can set up on your shoulders and it's easier to kind of control her. All right, got me on that. I'm nervous on that too. <laughs> there you go. Just... All righty. Bring her back this way. Okay. There you go. All right. Oh man. There you go, and that'll kind of help her feel more supported. Okay, where did her head go? She might, she might settle. Nice okay, there it is. Oh yeah, she's <laughs> more supported. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna need help there. I don't want to drop her. She is active. Yep. So you just keep moving your hands and yep. helping her. I think she's been in the bag for a while, so that may be she's why she's restless. She's wanting to wow. hang out. I want to get some wow. Right <sighs> so I did it. I never thought that I would have a snake around my neck one day. But I did it. And then after that, Michael was like, I want to hold that one too. <laughs> hold part of her. Man, Michael you is. Go. <laughs> You're a brave guy. She's heavy, ain't she? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> She's uh, from the northern region of South America, Suriname. Okay. That's the locality of her. Alrighty. And she's roughly seven to eight years old, so she's still got room to grow. And for some time now, I've been wanting to get one of these fire starting kits. And I got this one from Pure Fire Tactical, who was at the expo as well. How y'all doing? I'm Bobby Lynn with Pure Fire Tactical. Um, we make uh, a dual system fire starter, ferrocerium rod, pure magnesium. Really good ferro rod. I give you a piece of fat lighter. Uh, when you when you order them online, you don't get this, but when you're at the show, I give it to you. Uh, first of all, scrape off a good pile of shavings. When I'm really building a fire, my pile's probably about this big, and I put all my little twigs on it and build it up about like this, and save a spot to get in or move something out of the way, and then I just get get a little spark on it, and then I'm just adding wood after that. Uh, but the thing that separates our product from all the rest of them on the market is the magnesium and how soft it is. That's because it's so pure that you can scrape off minimum twice as much with less effort. And if you cannot, I will refund your money. Let me show you the difference. I won't put a name out, but um, this is the one they said this was pure magnesium. I said the proof's in the scraping, it always is. No different than any of the rest of them I've used. It was about $10 cheaper than ours. Uh, but that's the difference. That's why all these people that's been on these survival shows are using our product personally. Okay, this is going to simulate rain. I'm going to put a little water on this. Got a little plastic rain cloud here. Get that good and wet. What happens now is pretty interesting. When it gets to 4,000 degrees, the water is going to go back into the gaseous state of oxygen and hydrogen, and the hydrogen is going to burn. It's going to make a 6,000 degree fireball right there. So put a really good tinder bundle on this before you light it. Stay back about four inches from here to here. Shoot the spark and pull right back. If you push in, you only get about halfway and that fireball kind of licks your finger right there and puts a blister you don't want. <laughs> So you only do it once. Okay, this is dry, 5,600 degrees. That's 3,400 degrees hotter than lava. Lava was already hot, but lava doesn't burn quite hot like that. This is how the water burns. Wow. And if you wear it out, anything close to this on both sides, we have a free lifetime replacement, we'll send you a new one.
Oh wow. Nobody's ever done it. Probably takes eight, ten years to wear one out. And uh, they come as a kit. All of them do. I have this model and I have a folding model. This one keeps everything in the handle. The folding model will fit in your pocket by itself. It has a magnet here, a rare disc magnet to hold your striker. And it comes with a piece of the fat wood also. And oh, one tip, if, uh, if it's windy or the ground's wet, I think this has already gone out, but nope, still going. If you'll put the shavings on duct tape ahead of time, fold one little side over so it doesn't stick to itself. Put it on wet ground, it'll burn slow like that. Uh, nobody tells you that when they scrape them off, if it's windy, it blows away. <sighs> That's a game changer. Oh wow. That's simple, but effective. There's nowhere you can't build a fire with that. Wow. Now even though this first event wasn't humongous as far as attendance, I still consider it a success because we did have a good turnout despite only having three months to promote the event. And the workshops from the instructors, they were right on the money. A lot of great information. Just great. Oh, <laughs> and Zakiah, I don't know if he thought that he was paid to be a speaker at the event or not, but he really started talking for the first time, <laughs> at least trying to, here at the event. Oh my goodness. Well, look over here at Daddy. He's going to take a picture of you. Hey. Yeah. Are you talking? Hey. Yeah. Daddy's going to talk. Say hey. Daddy wants you to talk. Daddy wants you to talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey. Tell us about it. Yep. What else do you got to say? And during this three day event, the food was really good as well. So I definitely give two thumbs up in a number of areas for this expo. And while I was there at the expo, I did have an opportunity to chat with a couple of different speakers. And I asked them, what was one thing that was on their heart that they wanted to share with you? Now's the time to prepare. Get ready now. Be able, be able to build a fire, you'll have to cook with fire. It's, it's going to be very important. Fire could save at least some of the people. And would you say that learning how to start a fire, work with fire, is one important skill that every single human being should have? Yeah, yeah very much. Uh, I, you know, I sell to a lot of people that really don't have a clue about fire. I really encourage them to practice. I, some of them will come up to me a couple years later and I say, have you used the, the, the fire starter yet? No, it's in my safe or something. And I said, hey, get it out and use it. You don't want to learn. You don't want to have that, learn that skill when it's already happened. Yeah. You want to practice it before everything hits the fan. So, yeah. so in the emergency, you go into action, you know. Yeah. Preparation is only part of it. But practicing the skills, that's the other part. That's the important part. That makes sense. Why wait until the emergency happens to start exactly. trying to learn, exactly. <laughs> be ready and practicing before that. Yeah, we got to get that message out to people. All right. The, uh, the more people, and, and I'll tell this to, to you guys, uh, learn all the primitive skills you can. Not, not just fire making, but cooking, you know, on an open fire. Um, homesteading as much, you know, animals. Learn everything you can, and uh, it wouldn't be bad to learn friction fire, too. All right. I did that at a late, kind of a late stage in my life. Really? Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you, I appreciate <laughs> it. Yeah. The important thing is uh, snakes are more afraid of you than you are of them. Uh, a lot of people, it's a generational fear. If parents are afraid of something, the kids are more afraid of it. So if we could try, that's what we're trying to do is teach people, especially the adults, there's no need to be afraid. They're just trying to get by, just trying to survive. 
and they're very beneficial to the ecosystem that we live in. Do you like her? Thanks. One thing, make one change that they can make. Just wish one thing. Wow. To help them to prep um. or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I have an acronym, and I and it's called ADAPT. And ADAPT stands for when you spell a word out, it's acclimate, decide, act and pace and then trim and so just kind of being this kind of adaptation being flexible in your mind being flexible in your heart and your spirit and being able to see and understand that n the way you plan things out may not always go the way you want it but it doesn't mean that you quit it doesn't mean that you give up you're always finding a way i think that's probably the biggest principle when it comes down to survival prepping life uh, everything in general because you know it, it, it can always change things change all the time and you need to keep your morale up and you need to understand that those things happen and you can always bounce back from it. well I just finished my presentation saying don't prepare for tomorrow out of fear so I think it's really important to remember that we want to live compelled by love propelled by love for me, it's the God of love, obviously, but also a sense of love for my fellow man. I'm not afraid of tomorrow. I'm aware of the hazards that may be coming down the pike, but I'm doing things, even my preparation, because I want to love and protect my family, my community, myself. I'm not doing it because there's some big bad enemy out there. I hope that makes sense, but I just think love overall. I think that's fantastic. I totally do. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, so I gave uh, several talks here and uh, they're all about food production and food security and uh, community. So the, probably the one thing, a piece of advice I would recommend is uh, do what you can where you're at and connect with your local food producers and other people who are like-minded who want to um, eat healthy and grow more food. and. Uh, you know, try to try to connect in community with people around food. Food is very social, so it's easy to connect with people around food. So go to uh, farm to table dinners, connect with local farmers, connect with other uh, gardeners and homesteaders, and uh, get connected in your local food web so that, you know, if there's something you can't produce or you can't produce enough of it, then you can help source that locally. And you gotta remember every dollar that you spend locally uh, recirculates in your local economy. And so you're, instead of the, your, your money going to multinational corporations and uh, you know all over the country to corporate food production centers it stays in your local community and that can come back to you and your neighbors in a very beneficial way so I just encourage people to connect locally in their communities and try to um, become part of your local food family yeah and we're not to, meant to be alone we need we need one another yeah for sure. important for sure. <laughs> thank you sir hey thank you <laughs> So I'm pretty excited and looking forward to Mountain Readiness Expo 2024. And you can check out information for that in the show notes below as well. In addition to that, the rest of this year I plan to be at Polyface for the God's Good Table event August 11th. And if you want to come join us there, we invite you. Come on, check out the link in the show notes below. I also plan to be at Homesteaders of America once again this year in October. So check out that link is too. So it's pretty exciting, all these different events, and I look forward to hopefully some of you can join us at these events because they are worth it. Invest in yourself. It will just help you, your family, your homestead, and your life. Can't wait. See you next time.